Hello Limit Breakers and welcome to Challenger Insight. Caps against Jensen in MSI Finals. I will be explaining everything Caps is doing and skipping over the useless part. So this is a, a really big skill matchup between Silas and Ukali. Unlike in the game one where Jensen played Oriana and Caps played Morgana, this is going to be exciting. A lot of trading, a lot of fighting, and Caps has a carry champion. So he goes for the Conqueror build, I believe, because he will stay in fights against Akali for long. He can keep it stacked, and he just wants the all-in power that it brings. He goes Inspiration. It's just, if you look at the pro games, every single player almost, you have eight people in the game, just Inspiration. It's just the most powerful rune setup right now because it gives you so much sustain movement speed and utility and laning power so let's see what caps is gonna do so throughout the msi it was thought that a cal that siles just beats a cali really hard but then we also saw some a Cali's beat a siles so it's absolutely a skill matchup if if the siles is average and the actually <laughs> Akali is average then Silas will win but if both players are extremely skilled it's probably about 50 50 so let's see so Jensen is standing in front of the wave trying to zone caps goes for E level one so I expect that once the minions go low he's gonna E in go for a passive attack right now with his minions And Jensen goes for a really aggressive trade. I'd say level 1, Akali wins. Just because she can spam her Q much more. Silas E is 18 seconds level 1. Okay, now he goes for another E. For a passive, Jensen got in a nice trade. He just E's out to get the passive. Right now he knows he has the push. His jungler is also stronger in terms of ganks in the early game. So he should be completely fine pushing this out. Jensen did a nice sidestep there. So, so far, Jensen has been trading better than Caps. Now he goes for a topside ward. This ward is the best compromise between security and vision. He sees all of there. So usually you either put a ward... Uh, like here if you don't have time or you were afraid to face check so you just go here if you don't feel safe but he feels pretty safe since his jungler is stronger in early game he has mobility and they can force a fight but he also doesn't have enough time to go for this deep ward in the river because he would lose too many minions so this vision is the best compromise since it gives it's the best of two worlds not as good as the deeper one of course but still pretty great especially in the early game and now he knows where Olaf is. Gets this push. Okay, now let's see what he does with his priority. Got priority, moving with his jungler. Goes out of fog. Caps really likes to do this. A lot of higher level players do this. Just go out of fog. Play with enemy's mind. They don't know what's happening. And they maybe think you went to ward. Even when you didn't. Just many mind games you can do. Now Caps is deciding to not push this wave so whenever you bounce a wave under tower i mean push the whole wave under tower it will bounce okay there's a trade let's see what caps does this is pretty fine because jensen used his shroud it's 26 seconds cooldown rank one and now look at the jensen's wave it's not very ideal and rek'sai and silas have a lot of kill potential very strong gank setup so Akali is a little worried right now. She tries to push this as fast as possible to get out of this situation. But I also doubt that G2 wanna force anything big here. Because if Olaf counter ganks with this big wave, it could mean a lot of trouble for them. Yeah, exactly. So Jensen was communicating what was happening, what I assume was happening since I can't do everything, right? Right here, Jensen is under gank pressure. So he calls for Olaf that maybe he will get ganked now and he needs cover. And Caps is communicating that there's a good time to gank. but So that's what they try. But they don't overcommit. They see that Olaf is also there. And they decide to back off. 
And they did some nice damage here. Real cap stay or he TPs. I think he bases and TPs. Using his advantage of summoners against Jensen. I'm not sure what Jensen has right now. I think he has... Okay, so as always, you go for the Dark Seal, Dark Seal Corrupting but combo. They force on Jensen again. But miss. It's alright. I think in this kind of situation, it would be better to use the Silas Q first before the E. So you have the slow and it's much easier to land your E. Now look, Jensen's wave is really bad. And you see that right now in MSI, everyone plays around mid lane. Because mid lane is the most important lane. And in higher levels of play, it's true that right now, mid lane is ARAM. Everyone wants to go there, especially the bot lane too. Top laners don't get involved that often. See, everyone is around mid lane. Because, let's look at this fight. They're focusing on Rek'Sai, but they know that they have the man advantage, so there's no way they would lose the trade. So what was happening here? Because of the trade before, and Caps is just keeping on this cannon, it forces a freeze, a freeze in the wave. And right now, this kind of freeze will give Caps a... He just has an item lead right now on Jensen, he has HP lead on Jensen, and if Jensen bases, he will lose about two minion waves. So this already automatically creates a kill and kill advantage. However, C9 notice and they try to help Jensen. But also G2 know that they will want to help Jensen. And now it just becomes a fight of who is stronger. And if you look at the champions and if you look at the pressure, then G2 just clearly win because right now Caps is in a better spot than Jensen, as I said. More HP, more items, blah, blah, blah. Rek'Sai is, even with Olaf, I'd say, it really depends, it's not that big of a difference. And Trash is also coming in first with pressure. So they force a fight here. And right now, as I said, Jensen really wants to break this freeze. C9 really wants to help them. And this is how the fight basically happened. So... Caps procs the passive, Caesar in the shroud. Ease procs another passive to have vision on the shroud. But here he made a mistake with his E. He should wait with other CC. So he can guarantee the hit from Rex IW, for example. But this is still okay because they won the trade. But the biggest takeaway is that Jensen still didn't get the base. So he still is stuck on the Doran's shield. While Caps has more HP, he has everything. Like, this is so bad for Jensen. And he can't base, because if he bases now, he loses way too much. And if his team comes to help him, they will lose the fight. So what does Cavs do with... Pro okay, so he says, okay, Jensen, maybe you can farm or not. Goes out of fog right now. Team Lakevit has to be really insecure. I believe that Cavs will cancel this recall. Yes. He just wants to keep Jensen here. So what happens now is either Jensen super hard loses his lane. Okay, he went for the force, but now this is so bad. He lost his ult and didn't get really anything. So, okay. Now, usually third cannon wave, right? Jensen didn't base yet, I believe, a single time. So he was able to pick up all the EXP and farm. Now... The moment when mid laners or solo laners in general hit level 6 is the third cannon wave. At around, you see now it's 5 minutes 30. So on this wave, one of the mid laners, as long as they got all the EXP and farm, they hit level 6. So, so it's once someone kills all the 3 melee minions of the wave, they get level 6. Caps do this. You already called Mickey here. And this is just next level play. She baited. Akali... Our cooldown, I believe it's 100 seconds, rank 1. Now she will have no pressure. Caps goes back to lane and he loses virtually nothing. He lost one minion. Perfect scenario for him. So this is not only Caps being like insane 1v1 player or anything. He is communicating with his team so well and knows how to punish any small lead he has. Now at this point... Since Akali ult is on cooldown, and I believe Chaos will get the Akali ultimate, 
G2 can do anything they want because they will win any fight until Chenson's ulti comes back on. So grabs the blue buff real quick here. Then I believe E's okay. Now goes to lane. Grabs the Jensen ultimate. Okay, he doesn't. That's a bit strange. I don't understand why he wouldn't do that. Because there's not real reason. It's probably the best ultimate they have. Maybe he just wants to save, save it so he guarantees he has it before the fight happens. Otherwise, it could time out. So that's probably the reason. I'm not 100% sure. Gets the priority, gets Jensen's ulti. Way too much sustain. Okay, gets prior, goes out of fog. As always, guys, you see caps fog, 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 fog all the time. Why? It's just playing with enemies' minds. Now Jensen's thinking, watch out top lane. Maybe caps is roaming. Watch out, they might have a ward there or something. I believe a Kali ulti should be up now. Close to your jungler, far away from enemy jungler, right? You have Rek'Sai in top side river. This is a rule of thumb playing around jungler, so. Olaf is here. If he ganks, it's from this way, right? That's why Caps is here, so he has more distance. It's much harder for Olaf to approach him. And he also is closer to his jungler to get help. But it's not only about Caps. It's also about his jungler. So imagine that Rek'Sai would be fighting Olaf in the river right now, maybe for a top lane scrap, if, just imagine the scenario. He's also closer to join the fight, so that's pretty much the reason, biggest reason how to avoid ganks and just have more success when, to come, when it comes to setting up ganks, avoiding ganks, anything revolving junglers. So enemy team doesn't see Rek'Sai, he can woke up this far, he has his E, he has Akali out, there's no way he gets ganked. Now he gets the priority on this wave. Let's see again what he's doing. He, they saw they saw Olaf on the ward that he's trying to gank, but he already has Mickey X coming. No shroud on the Kali. Imagine you are the enemy team now. It's just so hard to gank caps because you know that Rek'Sai and Trash is around, and if you get counter ganked, it's just over. <laughs> Goes for the cancel. Okay, again, in the fog of war, they got the crap. They don't know what's happening. Do you see how well G2 are playing around each other? Playing around their strong side? So, I assume that they want this mid push. So they can break this bad situation that Jensen is in. And Caps just uses his ult to clear the wave. It was timing out. He just wanted to use it. Play a bit with their heads. This wasn't like an insane plane or anything. But there's no risk of doing that. Yeah, so his, his ulti... His Silas ultimate is timing out. Right here. It's only a few seconds. So he goes for this. And it's like... At this point, if you're TL, you're wondering... What the fuck, right? And the whole game, Caps was playing with their mind. So it just this is just a mind game. And... TL are like, oh, he needs to have cover, right? There's no way that he would do this if he didn't. But this is just, it's a bit of a genius play. It doesn't really change the game too much. You just see how Caps thinks and what he does, how he uses mind games to play against his enemies. Back to lane, he resets on a cannon wave as well. So that's why he keeps his TP. Because he knows he doesn't need the tempo play. And he also wants to save TP for a possible counter gank. Now he has TP advantage against Akali. It's very hard for TL to gank the sides now because Caps can always respond with a teleport. So I assume they have to go through mid lane, but Caps is also stronger than Jensen somewhat. So TL's win conditions are a little blurred at this point. There's not much vision that Caps has right now and his, his entire team is in the bot lane. So now his team is coming to cover him. This is when he starts playing a little more aggressive. Just look how the timings work, guys. Prox the passive again to see Akali. And again, easy live one trade. 
This is called, guys, calculated, calculated aggression. You ask when to play aggressive, when to play passive. Or should I be an aggressive player? Should I be a passive player? No, you should just know that there are times you can play aggressive and times you can't. So if you are in this situation right now, no vision. Nobody on Team Liquid is visible and you, your team can't help you run. They are way too far away. They are in the bot lane. So you're just kind of chilling. You're not going for anything crazy. Going for a trade right now, even if you think you would win the trade, is a suicide, okay? But the moment his team starts moving in river and transferring his pressure closer to him, he is confident that now he has backup and this is when he goes for a fight. So imagine right now, Right, Pike is already here. Rek'Sai can always come. And he knows he's in a stronger position. And for a good trade. So this is calculated aggression. You want to be calculated about that. You don't want to play blind aggro. That's the biggest mistake that people do. They just play aggressive at all times. They're like, oh, I've won my trade. I've won my lane. But the enemy was here. Well, guess what? The enemy mid laner maybe had brain. And he baited you or... If not, then you baited yourself. So Caps gets priority, sees that Wunder is chasing Olaf here and forces them off. Just gets a little bit of vision. Again, Fog of War playing with their head. He will walk back to mid lane right now. So, G2. Okay, this is the TP advantage. G2 are looking for a dive. He TPs on the minion. Very easy. He also has the Akali ultimate. <laughs> That's so broken on Silas. Mistimed a bit his second R. Hey, but happens to the best. Uh, Jensen goes for this insane plane here. Caps used Jensen's E to bait him. But it's Jensen that was baiting for Impact's TP. But the thing is, this is a reactionary play. And Jensen leaves midwave when it's in advantage for caps also they already lost the fight this is just like uh how do you call it like complementary price or just constellation price just so you, it, it's not that feels bad but they are lose they lost a tp on cannon and they will lose top farm and top lane plates and get nothing themselves but kills so still a good trade for g2 even though there's the shutdown look caps walk back in the mid lane and the wave is just beautiful for him. See? He doesn't lose anything. So Jensen lost more on this. And I believe G2 got about two, two plates in the top lane as well. Alright. Two kills. Jensen has been farming quite well. He also has two kills. So they are pretty even in power right now. But I'd still say that if Silas has a Kali ulti... He wins, but if he doesn't, Akali wins. I'm not sure that's 100% true. I know it's true if Akali doesn't have Conqueror, but if Akali has Conqueror, maybe it's different. Caps uses his mid lane priority to look for vision with his team. And then walks back to mid lane this way. He knows he has cover, he knows he has fresh lantern, so no worries here. Enemy team can't really kill him. Okay, goes for the priority again. And let's see what he does with it. Right now he's in fog. Maybe setting up... Okay, so they are setting up a gank in the mid lane. Now look again how aggressively... So this... this look again. Wunder is there, Rek'Sai is there, and he's just challenging the empty. He's like, come, gank me, kill me right now. I'm a free kill. But he's just baiting for his team. And again, calculated aggression. That's all it is. Decides to go for a push again. Needs to be a bit careful because Jensen is really strong. He's actually level ahead on Caps and has the Gunblade power spike. And Caps has a lot of gold in his pocket. Right now, I'd say Akali wins a fight against him. But he's using his team to never make it just a 1v1, right? Okay, now he has his items. Now he should be able to win. So midwave is... He's sacrificing midwave to go for this force. Protecting the tower. It's really smart, actually. Just for a midwave. Because now 
G2 got free bot, bot, bot lane, usually the team would trade on the other side of the map, but because Caps was there, it was harder for them to, to just get the top lane tower. But they still got it, thanks to the Herald. Maximizing the amount of farm he's getting, and then in just in time to pick up the mid wave. So let's see what's happening now. He should go match Jensen in the side lane, but because Wunder is dead, he has to be in the mid lane. If you decide to defend mid or bot, you always decide to defend mid lane tower. It's the most important tower in the game. It gives you just so much control over the map. Especially if you have a control mage on your team. Okay, Wunder's bot. Caps again is playing C, so this is a very beautiful illustration how you play around pressure. Your team is in top side, right? Where does your team have pressure? Top side. So where do you position yourself close to top side, close to your team? Because if the enemy team ganks you, where is it from? Where does the enemy team have pressure? See, Jensen is pushed all the way here. You don't have much vision, you have like only this ward. So enemy team controls this area. But pure if Caps was standing here, he's dead. Right now he's absolutely fucking dead. But because he's standing here, it's much harder for the enemy team to approach him and he's closer to get help. This is a beautiful, beautiful example of playing around pressure of your team and the enemy team. Wow, that, that's a lot of damage from the Silas. Using his ult. It's, it's only for a second cooldown now goes for a bit of damage his team is resetting but the enemy team doesn't know that and they are afraid that they could be sitting in fall because this is this is what caps was doing the whole game he always had help when he was playing aggressive so now tl are thinking so too and he is pretty safe it's it's like it's like a risky risky a little risky play okay so imagine Right, but it's risky play for both teams. So imagine Ash just uses her arrow now, and maybe they force something on the Silas. Maybe it will work. Maybe they will burn a flash. But Caps, as I said, has flash, has his E, has a lot of outplay potential, and the risk is much higher for the enemy team because Trash could be right here with the Lantern, as he always was before. Rek'Sai could be right here, and they just get turned on. Okay, and Caps knows this very well. That's why he's playing a bit up, even though he doesn't have real real pressure from his team i mean he has pressure from his team but not it's not it's like faking it okay i steam went for a reset they don't have to go to the side lanes let's see what happens pushing out the mid wave crashing under a tower takes ash ulti ulcer wow beautiful nice force here <laughs> again he was very safe to do this he knew where people were. He still had a flash if something went wrong. And just this little play, okay? Made double if back. Made him waste his ult. And made them waste a Kali TP. So right now Caps has TP advantage. Let's see what he does. Hmm, this is interesting because Akali has two items already. The Moral Nomicon to reduce the healing from Silas W. So I'd say she can win a fight against a Silas. But she was bot lane. So he'll go for vision a bit and then push the next wave. They know they have no ash arrow. And if the enemy team doesn't have ash arrow, they don't have a lot of ways to engage on him. So this is completely fine. Has a lot of gold. I believe he will just go base by the proto belt. Saves his TP. Again, you want to be in the side lane as a split pusher, as a mid laner, especially if you have TP. In either top lane or bot lane, close, and you decide what is closest to the objective you want to play around. In this case, it's Baron Nasher. So, which lane is closest to Baron? It's the top lane that is in side lane, right? So, that's why he goes there. Pushes the wave all the way up. Now, this depends on how safe you feel. If you think it's not very safe, you only push, like, to this point, And now you already go for vision. But if you know you're really, really safe, you push this out and then... You go for vision. Optimizing farm. Getting the jungle camps when there's nothing to get. The Kali doesn't have a TP. And now he's using his priority. They will be looking to contest this mid lane tower. The Kali is still in the bot lane. Okay. 
Okay. This was very aggressive. Impact just gets hooked, but CC to death. Now they sacrificed bot lane farm for this, but it's it's pretty good because they got a lot of damage on the mid lane tower, and they have to do the same thing they did now one more time, and the tower dies. So again, capsule get priority, go to rotate, and next time the mid tower is dead, unless they lose the fight, of course. Caps has TP now. Okay. Since he has TP, you know, usually the rule of thumb most of the time was that the mid laner is closer to your objective and the top laner is further away. And that's because mid laners didn't take TP. But now because Caps has TP, it's, it, it really doesn't have to be closest to the objective they are playing around. So now it depends on the matchups. So for example, if he feels like he can't win against Akali, he will be top lane. If he feels like he can, he can be bot lane. And also depends on who has tp so let's say caps wouldn't have tp and wunder had he would be top lane but if both have tp he can have the option to go bot lane and if wunder doesn't have tp he would be bot lane okay takes the ash out again this arrow is just to force the tower as i said this is just already the good thing they had from before another beautiful hook from mickey olaf is running in doesn't look very good for G2, they disengage here. The Kali went in. Jensen played this so beautifully, and he's also really strong. He's like the strongest member in the team, but decides to face check here. Caps gets the ultimate. It's just bye bye. This is so big because they get a shutdown on the Kali, and this swings the game so much in G2's favor even more. Wow. That was beautiful. So let's look at that again. Takes the Ash ulti. Forces on cannon their main like way to engage fights kind of. Unless they flank. And now they hook the cannon. But don't execute him in time. They're clumped and Olaf goes for beautiful flank. Jensen goes in. One shots the perks. A Kali in nutshell. Thank you. And now the fight looks completely lost, but Caps is just waiting for his cooldowns. And they know they have the pink ward here. Jensen makes a big mistake and breaks formation with team. Because right now, guys, Jensen is the strongest person in this in this game. He's definitely stronger than Silas. And he has the biggest, let's say, responsibility to carry TL right now. You don't want to do this kind of mistake when you are... The hope is on your shoulders because Ash doesn't do that much at this point of the game. Besides of the utility, she doesn't do that much damage. But here, if you get shut down, it's such a big swing for the enemy team. And he's dead. Nightcaps again will have his cooldown. Sundra is looking for something else. This is such so easy. Basically playing with vision. Okay. Push this out. I don't think there's many objective to get. But everyone is still dead. So there's nothing happening. He has enough time to just farm, 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 farm. Takes the jungle camps away. Now this is putting yourself ahead. While putting the enemy behind. Most beautiful combo. Caps has... Oh my. His 3.3k gold. His base will be massive. Bought the Morello Nomicon. Okay, G TLR engaging. They used everything right now on the pike. They know they have no cooldowns. I assume he will take the Kali ulti and there will be a fight. Okay, now they see Cannon in bot lane. Let's see what they do. Seems like they opt for the reset since their side lanes are not in the best state. Just goes and farms now. So, now Caps probably, since he got so much gold, wins the one we won. Okay, takes a Kali ulti. Rek'Sai is around. Alts. See the damage and healing. Nice try from Team Liquid, but there's just no way, as I guess. Well played by Caps. So, what's happening here? 
Team Liquid have the side waves in their favor, as in they are pushing. So they are looking for a fight here. And Perks is in the mid lane. Fresh is very far away, and they also have TP on the cannon. So this on paper looks okay. Caps also used his W. Okay, Qsverse doesn't commit yet. Takes the Akali ulti. Now when Akali tries to go in, he does R. Now she's stunned into a Q. QW to reset the animation. Then E. The moment he sees Jensen, he does second R. Portal belt. Waits for him to die. Look, at this point... <laughs> honestly, at this stage of the game, Olaf is not even a champion. If he's not ahead. Four levels down, okay? So Cap just knows how powerful he is and how useless the enemies are. And... He knows he can do this. Wunder TPs also instantly. Bot lane is also rotating first. So he knows in his head. Enemy team needs three people. At least two are not enough to kill him. Yeah, he would he would absolutely kill them both 1v2. 100%. So this was I mean a nice try from Team Liquid. But they just didn't understand how weak they are and how strong or how strong Caps is. Bates them in a bad situation and absolutely outplays them. And this is a free Baron for them. They know He knows that he's not needed, so he just walks to try to protect the tower. <laughs> Takes Bra multi. No way. And now he's fishing with fresh Moby Boots for the Ash. Don't think they'll get onto him. So just goes for a reset, buy some Magi because why not? I just did an absolute mega outplay on the enemy team. Now this is a team, he beats Akali in the side lane. So let's see if he still wants to side lane. Okay, he knows he's strong. He could do that. If he hit, it's good. If he doesn't hit, hey, I lost, I lost nothing. Uh, they are mid. I assume that they will push this. This is just a zoning LT. Oh my God, the damage. To force the fast priority and now they will rotate into bot lane so they just absolutely don't give a fuck about the top lane right now this is only three people and look how mickey is just fog right uh, for the lantern now they don't know where mickey is so they if they go here mickey can lantern if they go bot mickey can lantern so that's why he's standing there the size out is like 10 seconds cooldown right now so very easy to do anything he wants okay they get the priority again top wave is starting to build up a lot so in a sense it's bad for g2 that they don't have pressure but it's also good that it's denying farm from team liquid and it's much easier to have to control two lanes than to control all three of them at the same time exposes you to less weaknesses but you have less points of pressure He has stopwatch, he has flash, he can absolutely be really aggressive. Okay, goes to Fog again. I wonder what G2 are waiting for. Now they will crash the mid wave and the bot wave as well. At the same time. I believe Caps will go really aggressive now, maybe? No, no, no. Just playing with them. Next, next wave, this tower is gone. And they already got bot lane, so no need to overforce it. Let's fast forward a little bit. They rotate to bot wave, it's massive. People are really deep, goes for huge kid and LT. And it's game over. Wow. 10 1 6. So Jensen was playing well, he was trading well, but the way Caps played with his team was just better and i assume it's all in the communication you saw how he's using the pressure of his team to just body jensen very well played i'm excited for game three if you want to see more please subscribe and let's go